this Miracle Art Studio. I don't know about you, but I always have projects that I start and then I never finish it. So today I'm going to finish one of those projects and it is a little wooden box. The only thing I've done with it so far is I have painted it a light grey. Let's see what else we're going to do with this box. I've pulled together a couple of supplies that I think I might need for this project. I have my pewter that was with this and as you can see it's been through the run of the mill but I'll just I'm still going to work with that and then of course we're going to need our design that we will emboss as well as the painter's tape to adhere our design to the pewter and then for this i'm going to use this for the inside of the box this one already have a thin layer of the satin varnish on and for this other one other piece of scrapbook paper and it's it's just thin scrapbook paper i'm just going to add another or a layer of varnish on this one still haven't got it on and a paintbrush to put it on and um, we're going to need sequang tape to adhere everything together and this is where the big sheets of the um, sequang tape comes in really handy we're going to need our metal embossing work surfaces as well as a couple of tools that i've pulled out a roller i think looking at the design i think we are going to need um some cup and ball tools or ball and cup tools we're definitely going to need um Teflon tip tools or this plastic burnishing tools, a couple of paper stumps as well as I've pulled out one um, texture wheel. I might just pull out a little bit more and what up is now? Oh, and the box that we are going to put our design on. I'm using a splat mat first and that is just so that I can quickly paint the layer of varnish onto my piece of paper. As for adding the varnish, I just put a little bit out on my piece of paper and I just spread it out to the outside. And the paper is really going to buckle up or bubble up. And that's fine. It usually go flat again as so. well. The reason why I do this, it is just that once we adhere it on the inside of the box, it does not, um, it sort of just have that protective layer on, that it's just not the paper. So it seals, it almost gives it like a, I don't want to say plasticky look, but you know, when you have varnish. So I'm just going to go over oh, there's a, like this and I'm going to put this off to the side so that this can dry and by the time we get to this it should be dry. Next up is we're going to adhere our design to the pewter but before we're going to do that um, the first thing I'm going to do is I've just noticed I've never marked my back. So I'm quickly going to write it back on here. And this is just for myself so that I know which side I am working on. So always a good thing to do. And I'm going to be working on the hard surface. And I'm going to use my burnishing stylish tool. I'm just going to flatten this out. And turn it around and come in and flatten it from the opposite side again and yep you will see a faint little mark there but at least it looks 10 times better than what it did before this design is just half of the box so the whole lid is not going to be covered but because we're going to do um, some high relief, I don't want to do the high relief right up until the edge because then you're going to see the wax. So what I am going to do is I'm going to place it about half an inch or so from the edge of my pewter. And you know what? I think I just should have cut this out quickly. <music>
comes to tracing your design, you can use either your stylus, you can use a pencil, or you can use a pen, whichever you're feeling more comfortable with. I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to be working on a paper pad when I trace, but you can also trace on a hard surface. It all depends, you know, what is working best for you. So I'm just going to go and hopefully I can see with all the pencil marks here which ones I've already traced and which ones not. <music> Always double check that you have transferred um, your whole design and once it's you're sure it all has been transferred um, you can just remove it this is another way that you can do it leave some side attached and then you just look at the op this tracings here it looks like everything has been traced and then you can remove it First, I'm going to start with the two half circles here, and I'm using my Teflon tip tool, a wider one. And I'm just going to, I actually should have only done the one, but now I've already started with the next one. And come on to my hard surface. Flatten and where I just went in the line. I don't know how often that happens to you. It actually happens quite often to me. Okay, and there's my metal stylus. And you can use either side for this. You can use the little ball side or you can use the little bendy side. Um, I find that when I work around like this or in straight lines, I prefer the, the bendy side. But when I work on really small circles, I prefer to use the ball side. Just going to tidy this up to get that even. And I will do a whole design here to round it off or to finish that off. So what I'm going to emboss next is these little, the four petals that's there. And I'm going to do the high relief on the front. I, I will work from the back, but I'm mostly going to do it on the front. So I usually use the back of a floor towel for this. But um, my floor towel is a little bit farther away today. So I'm just going to use it. On here. So once I'm done with this, the next step is I'm going to push the sputer into that little petal and I'm working with the flat side of my um, paper stamp. And once that is done, I'm going to come in with my Teflon tip tool that has it's at, uh, this is not the one I'm looking for. I'll grab the wrong one here. Uh, oh, there it is. And I'm just going to flatten that little ridge around. And with that done, I'm going to take my stylus and refine. So I'm going to pop all those, the other three as well. And this 
area over here I just want a little bit of texture but not a lot so what I did was I got the this is the bag from an oranges and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it underneath and just make sure it's right up until the end and then I'm just going to rub over it it doesn't really give as much as what I wanted So always think about, you know, what do you have lying around at home that you can put or that you can use to create some kind of texture. Okay. Yeah, I think that's enough. I'm just going to flatten this out and you can either use your roller or your paper stump. So there you can see it has that little bit of um, just a hint of texture that's over there. because I've lost my lines I'm just going slowly with these ones and then once I have them down I will come in and now I will emboss and now I'm going to turn around to a thicker one and just to get a wider line <laughs> Next that I'm going to emboss is the circles that is here so it will be these circles so I'm going to do exactly the same as what I've done with these ones I am going to let me just do one and I'll start with a full one so I'm just going to reline my circle on my mat and I'm actually going to work criss or opposite from each other and do two at a time so when you do things like this never work with two next to each other always leave you know one opening between them so that you can do neat um, or get a neater um, refining and then just come in and push the access pewter into it to pop it and it will create that little channel around it. And then from there, you're just going to come in and we are going to flatten that. And yeah, and my circles is not round. I can't draw a straight line and I can't make a perfect circle. Would have been nice if we had um, ball and cup tools that's this big. You can actually use a circle stencil for this as well if you want to. And But what you can do as well is you can just come in from the back and you can push it out a little bit uh, just to make it neat and tidy. There is actually a big ball teflon tip tool which is perfect for things like this so you can go out make it round flatten it and then just come in and then once you've got this done 
it is just going to be refining it again. So I'm quickly going to pop the rest of them as well. Next is going to be the first scallops, which is these ones. So I'm going to do them. And again, I'm going to pop them so it will be... From there, I actually think I'm just going to grab my tile. I was thinking I can cut corners by using this one, but it's it's just too soft. So this is definitely a harder surface to work on. Although it's still a soft surface, I must actually say a more dense surface, I think. Yeah, definitely better. So I'm going to work cross over here oops that one's going to be a little bit bubbly back onto the hard surface and now it is again just moving that excess pewter in yeah it's moving out And then we are going to refine. And there, I just made a dent in that one. I See if I push it slightly with that. Where's that big ball Teflon tip tool? Let's see if we can save the day. Much better. I forgot to refine. I knew there was something missing. So before I'm going to um, pop or high relief these ones over there, I think I'm going to make little scratch marks in them. And all I'm going to do is I'm using my metal stylus and I'm just making these little scratch marks. And I'm starting from the outside, working towards the end of the previous bubble or petal or I don't know mandala mandala actually and um, yeah so you can also do this after the fact once you have folded with beeswax you can also do these scratchings but I was just thinking you know let me do them now and then they are there. And the moment when you feel like it's sort of starting to bunch up, get your paper stump and just flatten it again. Embossing mandalas is repetitive embossing. You would start from the center and work your way out to the outside edges and repeating the same process over and over again.
the next line which is this one over here I would like to have it embossed like this one here so I'm going to work from the back and I'm quickly going to emboss those ones and it's just going to connect over here it's not going to go in to that one um, so it will be a separate line <laughs> Next up is going to be that lines over there and oh by the way this is someone asked when I did the tutorial on how to use the dry needlepoint cutter how did I emboss that um, mandala it's a sun and moon mandala and I've done it this way I've started from the center and then I've worked my way um, out to the outside so this is how I've done this one so or that one looking at this design I think that line actually came out of that one but oh well now there's a change in the design it's a good thing if you work with your own designs, you can change it as you go along. You don't have to worry about, you know, copyright or anything like that. Or somebody thinking, oh, but that's not how my design is looking. Next is going to be those lines and then once I'm finished with these ones I'm going to be moving on to this section so it will be embossing these ones I will most probably just use a um, ball and cup tool for those ones and then once those are completing completed I will just move on to the last one so yeah that is what is going to happen so next up is the little bubbles or the circles those ones and I'm going to do that with a um, ball and cup tool so I'm just going to come in 90 degree angle right from the top and I'm going to go in swivel 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 go to the next one swivel 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 I'm not oh yeah, let me just do it there too and swivel swivel so I, I do a less swivel here than on the others because I don't want it as high. And swivel, swivel, swivel. Main thing with this is just to come in at a 90 degree angle onto your hard surface. And again, 90 degree angle. And we are just going to push it down and we will have perfect little circles i want to accentuate some of these with the um uh, texture wheel and i'm using the small dotted wheel in hindsight i should have done it before i did these little small ones but you know what i'm still going to run with it and i'm just going to come in slowly and i'm going to outline this leaf just to add a little bit more texture to the design so when i'm going to cut out i will cut out just outside that line that um, line i will still keep that in as part of the design you can also do this on a paper pad you don't necessarily need to do it on a softer surface. 
I'm concentrating so I can't even speak. <laughs> oh my. Um, you know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to run it inside that embossed line. So I'm still working on the soft surface or a semi-soft surface with my small dotted wheel and I'm working inside that embossed line. Let's see how that pans out. Oh yeah, that looks not too bad. Okay, so next step is I'm quickly going to em emboss those ones, but first, before that's going to happen, I'm just going to flatten around my little balls here. A few things to notice here, because this design is going to be cut out i didn't apply as much pressure on the outsides here as what i did over there so it really looks like the design i don't know if you can see it really pick it up but the design is sort of tapering tapering down to this side here and now i just have to figure out what i would like to do yeah um, on this part that's going to go onto the box because that is going to be cut out. I'm just going to run texture wheels along here and I'm going to use my white horizontal one as well as the wave texture wheel. So I'm going to start with the wave texture wheel and I'm just going to run it, well I want to say in a straight line but as straight as what I can down here as a guide but yeah again it's not very straight um, just flatten this part here and then I'm going to come in with my the white diagonal lines And move forwards, backward, forwards, backwards, and trying to go as straight as what I can. And when that is done, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to flatten that again, and go back in with the wave tool. I might just do two of these and just run it along there. Yeah, I think I'm going to do another one just to go right on the tippy edge. Dip it, yeah, I don't even know if that's a word. I'm quickly going to fill this with wax and um, oh, I think I'm going to run a double row of the wave tool on the top side as well. This is just a little bit of a gap. And you have that little bit of a wavy movement feel. While I'm waiting for the wax to settle, I thought it might be a good idea to quickly cut out these um, strips that we're going to need or the for the inside. So I've measured the inside of the holder and well it's supposed to be a square holder but yeah I know it's not square but it looks like it is seven and a quarter so i'll do seven and a quarter and seven and a quarter and then from there we can always just trim it um to make sure that it does fit and again this one these ones have been sealed with the um sealer trimmed it to size to fit in there so next is so we can just add the sequin tape to it and as I said I, I usually work with the rolls but 
I don't have rolls that is wide enough. So this is where these little sheets come in very, very, oops, and there it goes, skew, whoops. But this is where the sheets come in very handy. And when you go skew with the Sukhwang tape, don't try and lift it. It's a lost cause. You're just going to do more harm than what you are going to do good. So cut to size and I'm also going to add Sukhwang tape to this one as well. Next, we're going to glue this down. And I had the two options, the dotty one as well as this one. I've marked them when I dry fit my paper. I've marked them which is the top. So I can know it goes in the right way because it doesn't fit properly on the other way. So now it's just literally trying oops, to maneuver this in here so that you can glue this down oh, and there you go skew a little bit oh, not by much i'm just going to grab oh, that's my roller just going to grab my roller and give it a quick roll So I've decided to use the um, the busier one for the bottom and of course you can go even further now um, you can do a little trim around there um, I would just leave it as is but yeah you can have some ribbon and put a trim over there you can do stamp a sentiment in here quite a few things that you can do but I'm just going to leave it plain like that. So I'm going to do quickly glue the lid one in and then we can move on with our project. Patina is done, um, polish is done. So the next step is we are going to need to cut this out. Beeswax is in. I filled it with, um, or I added the Sukhwang tape, and now it is back to cutting again. So we're just going to go around and cut. So I think I'm going to. And I'm using the dry needle cutter. It goes by so many different names. It's a dry needle point cutter, a dry needle cutter. Main thing is you need to cut on either a cutting mat or a um, glass. I prefer a glass. And when you do have the Sukhwang tape on, make sure that you cut through until you feel you are on the glass and i'm just cutting in the one direction now and always cut towards yourself as well there is a video the sun and moon mandala i was talking about earlier where i go into detail on how to use the dry needle point cutter so I will link that video below and you can have a look in detail how to do the cutting. Next is to get rid of all the sharp little points. And that I do with my little scissors. Oops, that one is a little bit too much. Just shape it a bit. And when I was cutting over um, where I've used the texture wheel, I make sure that I've cut next to that so that I can keep that detail as part of the design. You can also cut out the whole um, 
everything with uh, with scissors i just find that using the dry point or the needle cutter it just gives it such a nice i don't know i i just like it but try it and see which one works best for you okay and just coming in with the point and just smooth everything over because it always looks like these little i don't know what you call it fluffy sort of things <laughs> sticking out but that is just because of the sukwang tape the backing paper so yeah give it a once over like this and next we are going to fit it and see how it works bringing in our box i'm just going to line that up let's see more or less where is the center this one doesn't have okay so that is more or less in the center oh that one is nearly done or in the right spot i should say so this one just needs a small little trim. Okay. It's removing the sukwang tape and just place putting our design down. And then our box will be completed. And there you can see everything has been filled with wax. Um, so just line it up on top. Just make sure. And then just press down. That band over there whopped a little bit when I was working with the wax, with the amount of wax that is in here. using my little stylish plastic stylish stylish <laughs> stylus just to smooth this down and I usually have one that I use for these finishing touches and um, so that I don't use it anywhere else because it can actually start scratching your pewter if you do work with that Just make sure you, as I mentioned, you have all your points and your ends down. And there you go. Actually, so nice to see the sun. It's supposed to be spring, but we're still in our winter willies here. Um, it's still fairly cold. Well, I. Glad to say that I can take another undone project off the list as completed. So we started off with the box that I've painted quite some time ago, as well as the hardware I did that a long time ago. And then today I did the embossing and we've also cut this out. When I was looking at the box, it just needed something and i found these little knobs <laughs> that i ordered for something else and it turned out they are way smaller than what i thought they were but it actually works perfectly for this project so when we open the box we have the scrapbook paper in us um, and it was just we've added a layer of the um, acrylic varnish for that just to seal it so that it can stand a little bit of wear and tear and yeah you know it is just like um we don't always have to cover the full box we can just do parts of it on the side or we can even have done something for the corners here yeah, that would have looked nice as well now thinking in hindsight to do something for the corners i might just decide to do that later on i'm not sure but for now 
um, this project is done. As always, I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me in the studio today. And always remember, the world of reality has its limits. The world of imagination is boundless. Mm -hmm.